Alright. I should have wore some deodorant, I gotta be honest with you. So I'm driving past the town hall the other day. And right next to the town hall, they got this little lake. And every time I drive past, there's like, there's got to be at least 25, 30 sailboats in the lake. Little model sailboats. And they all have different color sails. I mean, they're beautiful. So I say, oh man, I always rush home. I round up the wife and the kid. I hop back in the car. I was, you got to see this. Sailboats all over the lake. They're sailing around. I'm dying to see this, right? We go back to the lake, and inevitably, every single time we go back, the sailboats are gone. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's a club. I can't figure it out. But they got a park there, too. So we wind up taking the kid to the park. Anyhow. My Faja. I wind up going to a garage sale, alright? And I asked the guy if he's got any video games. He tells me, yeah, I got a Nintendo, I got a Sega, I got a Turbo. And before he could even finish it, I was like, Graphic 16? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh I, I, I can't even tell you what happens to my body when I hear that. <laughs> it's like I, my central nervous system starts wringing out my spine like a sponge. I mean, it's a mixture of endorphins that, that the adrenaline starts going. I said to the guy, I, I said, oh, yeah. Now, he's just getting set up, by the way. So, like, I said, I'm really, in, I said, uh, no, I didn't say it. I said, I'm interested. I said, can you bring this stuff out? And he goes, ah, I, I'm, I'm getting set up over here right now. He's like, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm running late. And I, that's when I, I usually say, oh, okay. And then I say, oh, well, I'll come back. And then I come back, and and every time somebody has what I want in their hands, I said, uh-uh, not this time. So I'm like, listen, I said, Turbo Graphics is what I, what I look for. I said, I had it as a kid. I've been looking for that particular console. I said, is there any way you could bring it down? I said, I'll pay you good money. <laughs> I don't think those words are ever... Past my lips. So the guy's sitting there. He's on the fence about it. He's like thinking, thinking. I said, yeah, you know, I, I'm really interested. He's like, ah, you know what? Let me take down your number. And I'm like, oh, take down my number. So I'm like, all right. I write my number down. I said, listen. I said, if you're going to bring this stuff out, I said, just call me before you bring it out. I'm right around the corner. I'll zip over here. He's like, no problem. I said, I almost believed for a second this guy was going to call me. I go out, I finish up my garage sailing. It's like 11 o'clock, 11.30 now. It's probably like two, three hours later. I said, I am not letting this one slip through my fingers. I'm not doing it. I said, I'm going to stop back and try this guy again. I pull up in front of his house, a cop pulls up right behind me. Like out of nowhere. I get out of the car, the cop is like, like looking at me like, why is he getting out of the car? <laughs> I don't think he realized that I was going to this garage sale. So the cop gets out of the car, and he kind of like confronts me. And he's like, uh, where you heading? I'm like, I'm going to the garage sale right here. I said, I got my son. I'm, op I'm in the process of opening the back door because, you know, my son's in the, in, the, uh, in the car seat. He's like, you know, your registration's expired. An impossibility. I just had the car registered. I said, it can't be. I said, I just had the car registered. Ugh, this is like, a, this story's getting way too long. Anyhow, my, I look out of the corner of my eye. My parents show up at the garage sale. So now here I am. The guy's looking at me like this nutbag is back. He's got the cops on his tail. 
And now my parents are here, my mom's waving to me. I'm like, eh, the cops are looking at me like, who are these people? I'm, I'm such I'm such a stress ball at this point, and all I, I, I could care less about the cop and what he's about to do, what kind of ticket. All I, my mind is on nothing but that terrible graphic 16. So the, the cop says, give me your information. He goes, take your son out and go to the garage sale. I was like, I was like, all right. So we go, I say hi to my parents. Da, da, da. My father says, I got something for you. He hands me a box. We go over to the to his car. He hands me a box. I go up to the guy at the garage sale. I say, hey, uh, any chance you could bring out those video games? And he gives me this, like, he goes, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to it today. I call. He goes, I got your number. I'll call you. I'm like, oh, great. Now this guy hates me. There's no way in the world he's going to call me back. He's like, I'll call you tomorrow. And now I'm trying to be nice about it. Oh, yeah, I said, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I didn't, I just figured I'd give you a try on the way home, you know. I was like, oh, my God. Anyhow, I didn't get a ticket. But the, mo the most important part here is my father gave me a box, and inside the box was a sailboat. So I'm like, I'm like, Dad, how did you know? He picked it up at a garage sale. I said, Dad, how'd you know? I w I've been wanting a little model sailboat so I could take my son down to the lake and sail the sailboat. And this is a nice one, man. It's made in Germany. Uh, it's like incredible. It's got this wood deck on it. It's called the Stormbird or the, or the Stromvogel. <sighs> anyway, I get out of work the other day. And it couldn't be a more beautiful day. I mean, we're in, it's, it's October now. It's the fall. It's my favorite time of season. It's just absolutely gorgeous. No humidity. 70-something degrees. I go home. I grab the wife and the kid. I say, I say, oh, no, I don't. I say, hey, honey, come on, let's go to the park. It's beautiful out. I got the sailboat now. We'll go put the sailboat in the lake. She's like, ah, oh, do we? She's like, do we have to? Um, she doesn't want to go. My son's sitting there watching Blippy on TV. I'm like, I I'll get, I'll get him to want to go, and then she'll have to go. I said, I said, hey, Tony, you want to go to the, to the park with his, with the sailboat? And he's like, no, no, watching Blippy. And I'm like, what? So I said, enough of this. Then I, then I flip out. I say, come on, can we get out of this coffin for two seconds? It's like. Two in the afternoon, she's still in her pajamas. My son is still in her pajamas. Can we do something with our lives? So anyway, everybody gets dressed. We head over to the park. I'm so excited now. We go sit next to the lake on a park bench. I pull this boat out of the box. And I didn't realize how many pieces there were. <laughs> So now I'm, I'm trying to put up the mast. I pull out the instructions. They're in German. There's no pictures. It's all te text written. This boat's from like the 1950s. I'm putting up the mast. I'm trying to figure out how to do the main... It has a, it has a main sail. It has a spinnaker. It has all this rigging. Uh, all these pulleys you gotta, you gotta cinch up and whatnot. So I'm sitting there and like my, uh, my head is spinning. And she's like, I'm going to take the boy over to the park. Because now it's like, you know, I'm like 10 minutes into this thing. I can't figure out how to put the mast up. So she takes the boy over to the park. Now I'm sitting there and I'm trying to... I finally patch this thing together. I know I did it the wrong way. I finally patch it together. I got the, the sail up. I'm like, I don't know how to adjust the sail. I figure, ah, I put a little tilt here, over here. There's a rudder. I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I get on my phone and I'm like, hey, hon, get back over here to the lake. We're ready for the maiden voyage. Oh, my God, I couldn't be more excited. There's a little breeze in here. I mean, this is perfect conditions. They come back over. I put this little sailboat in the water. And this thing takes off and makes a beeline 
straight across the lake. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was so excited. I was like, look, it works. I run around. Now I run, I start running to the other side of the lake to retrieve it. And as I'm running, in my head, I'm like laughing. I'm watching it. I'm like, look at it go. Look at it go. It was like I was five years old again. My son's running behind me because he wants to come, come and, uh, and see what's going on. It goes straight across the lake. I'm like, I'm thinking, my thought was this thing was going to get stuck in the middle of the lake and we we're going to be all there all day, there all day trying to fish it out. Go to the other side of the lake. I turn the boat around. I'm like, what's going to happen? I turn the boat around. The sails go the other way, and it starts cutting this nice straight line right back across the, to the other side of the lake. And it's like, your mind just, the wonderment of it all. You're like, the wind was blowing this way, it went this way. Now, the blue wind didn't change direction, but the boat's going this way. And you're saying to yourself, how does it work? What is it like, the wind blows around the thing and starts pulling it? I, your mind, the mind just goes crazy. I go running back to the other side of the lake. This is great. I can't believe it's working. It's got a little rudder on it. I get back over to the other side of the lake. It's got a little rudder. I make it go in a place where I think it's going to go. I, I anticipate where it's going to go. It goes right to that place. This is sailing, top-notch sailing. Right? I'm like, and I, next thing you know, I come back and... I turn around to my wife like, can you believe this? I got this look on my face like, can you believe how amazing this is? She goes like this, just like this. This is what you brought me here for? And it was like, and then I turn around and the next thing you know, my son's crying. I'm like, what? It's like my whole world came crashing down. I was like, whoa, 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 blah, blah. She's like, I'm taking your son to the playground. I was like, you know what? I just can't fucking win. I can't win. I had a whole crowd of people around me watching. All right, maybe five. And they all might have been over 80 years old. <laughs> the guy says to me, he had like Parkinson's disease. He was like, does that run on batteries? And I'm like, what are you? I was like, who the fuck are you? What are you fucking kidding me? I was like, this is the real deal, old man. Is everybody bored to death? Let's get... Alright. Listen. I've been to the garage sales for like... It's got to be the past five weeks. I can't find anything. I, I can't find anything. got some DVDs here. I figured we'll go through the DVDs here because I get excited about DVDs now. I get real excited about them. I got this huge DVD collection that I'm building downstairs. Anyhow, here we go. These are, these are just essential movies that every man should own, okay? It's true. Look at this. Goodfellas. It's brand new. That's the great thing about DVDs. A lot, most of the time, People go and buy DVDs because it's like their favorite movies of all time. And they, they've seen them a million times, but they feel like, they, they feel like they're obligated to have it in their DVD collection. Because half of having a DVD collection is showing it off to people. I Trust me. It's the same with video games. You want to show people that you got, you got good style. Or you're well cultured. Look at my DVD collection. I take it very seriously. Listen, my DV, co DV collection is hardcore, baby. You're not going to find any snoozers. Here we go, good fellas. Nobody. It's still in the wrapper. I paid. It's either 50 cents 
the majority of the DVDs I pay 50 cents for. It's got to be outstanding for me to pay a dollar. Anyhow. So we probably paid 50 cents for this. It's brand new. Goodfellas. The best scene in Goodfellas is Billy Bats at the bar. <laughs> it's fucking annoying. I do this to my wife. When, uh, when what's his name walks in? Joe, Pe uh, Joe Pesci? And Billy Bats is like, Oh! Oh! <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> It's so fucking aggravating. I do it to my wife all the time. And she's this hothead Dominican. And she hates it. She starts to boil. I see her face turning red. And she's tan. Oh! Like over here. Oh, God. Oh, by the way, I did a whole animated scene uh, to that scene from Goodfellas, that Billy Bat scene at the beginning of one of my videos, and YouTube pulled it down. It's one of my favorite ones of all time. Favorite intro of all time. YouTube just rips it down. You know what? Fuck me. Oh, here we go, guys. Patton. You never see Patton? You don't know what you're missing. Okay? The best part of Patton is when he walks into the barracks <laughs> and nobody expects for him to be there. Oh, God. It's always great when somebody with authority walks into a place. I... Anyhow, all the soldiers are like, there's like girly magazines everywhere. The, the barracks are a mess. All, all the soldiers are like in t-shirts. They're not in uniform like they're supposed to be. And Patton walks through and you say, oh, my God, heads are going to roll. General Patton, huh? What a fucking... What a misunderstood man. Hmm? Patton wanted to go into Russia after World War II. Right? Isn't that why they put MacArthur in? Because Patton had, had big ambitions. He said, you, gotta, you better go through Russia while they're down and wipe them out or you're going to be dealing with them later. And boy, was he right, huh? Poof! <laughs> Imagine what the world would have been like if we would have if we would have plowed through Russia. And he died in a car crash? I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Patton knew too much. Alright? We all know how Patton died. Here we go. This is fitting. Here we go. Halloween. Halloween limited edition. Look at this thing. It's big and thick. I don't really care for the big thick movies because it's just taking up more space at this point. I don't need it. What's in here? What could possibly be in here? Uh, I don't know. Here we go. Halloween. What a treasure of a horror movie. Am I wrong? The atmosphere in this movie is what makes it so goddamn creepy like so many other uh, old... Uh, you know, like late 70s, early 80s horror movies. It's all about the way it's filmed. It's something that a modern uh, horror movie can't capture. And the music, and it's just, it's just Halloween, and the mask, and Michael Myers. Come on. You gotta watch it every Halloween. You just gotta. You gotta. Ah, here we go. It's the Terminator. I don't know what the hell fucking DVD cover that is. And we didn't pay $3 for it, trust me on that one. Yeah, the Terminator, it's the greatest of all the Terminator movies, isn't it, though? Oh, yeah. This movie had a feel about it. I remember watching this movie as a kid. At the end, when they're in the factory, and he's just crawling. Like, the Terminator had his, like, legs sheared off by some machine. And he's just crawling at, her, at, at Sarah Connor. And um, uh, as a kid, I was like, oh, my God, he, he just won't stop. It was such a fright. <laughs> this was such a frightening movie as a kid. You're like, this, this guy, he's just, he's, he won't let up. It was terrifying. I'll forget about it. The whole scene when he, got, when he busts into the police precinct, he drives the car through, and then it's just like a machine gun fest. 
doesn't get any harder than that. Oh boy. I, you know what? Here's another one, brand new. I don't know. What are you going to do? What, what am I going to do? Am I going to walk away from this? It's Dirty Harry Callahan. All right? It's funny because you got dirt, original Dirty Harry, Magnum Force, the Enforcer, Sudden Impact. We're missing one here. We're missing one here. I don't know, man. Dirty Harry. I mean, what cracks? The, dirt, the original Dirty Harry, you know what the funniest part of Dirty Harry is? When he's driving with his partner and they're looking for some perp somewhere at night and they're driving through San Francisco and... Dirty Harry does something where where he he's driving. It was like his fault. You could tell from the, the view of the car, like w whatever maneuver he pulls, it was his fault that he almost crashed into somebody. <laughs> and Dirty Harry goes, "Get out of the way, Hammerhead." <laughs> I don't know for some reason. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Magnum Force. Come on, when he's in the shooting range with the other guys. And they're all talking about their guns and and listen, the thing about Dirty Harry is he carried around that 44 Magnum cannon, and it had a sound like no other gun that you heard in the movies, right? It 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 was like, it just had that like cracking, ripping open space time sound. Just wait to hear that gun go off. <laughs> oh my god. And what was the other one? What was the one where he's in, he's in the he's in the convenience store and he's behind a two way mirror and these two sleazy scumbags come in. <laughs> Dirty Harry has the best bad guys. And the guy's like, empty out the register or whatnot. And the guy gives him like a couple bucks, I think. And the guy's like, I, he knows there's more money. He's like, where's the rest of it? And he's like, that's it, there's no more. And was it that, or did he ask Dirty Harry if he was a cop? Yeah, he, Dirty Harry was like, uh, you know, in plain clothes. And uh, he's like, you a cop or something like that? I don't know. But anyway, the guy goes, you lying sack of shit. <laughs> I gotta find a clip. Oh my god, yeah, baby. What movies? What movies? These these are the Death Wish movies. That's it, you can burn every other DVD on planet Earth. Just leave me with, with Dirty Harry and Charles Bronson from Death Wish. Oh my god, look at this. We paid 50 cents for this. It's the Godfather DVD collection. What are you kidding me? Look at this. There they are. Godfather 1. 1, 2, and 3. That's it. And some type of bonus thing. Bonus scenes. I don't know. Oh my god. The Godfather. The Godfather is one of those movies where every time I, if I turn on the TV, it doesn't matter where that movie is. I have to sit and watch it. I have two movies here right now that are like that. But the best scene in The Godfather is... Out of so many. When Michael goes to the hospital and there's nobody there, God and his father, that's a creepy scene, man. That's an old scene. And, uh, what happens? Then the guy shows up and he's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm, I'm, um, what was the guy's name? He's like, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, 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 I forget the guy's name. He's like, the baker. And he'd like pretend like the gangster's outside and then like the guys drive up that we're going to kill Michael's father. Oh my God. It's a tremendous movie. The Godfather, please. Please. <laughs> the other great part too is where Michael goes to Vegas and, uh, and when he goes to the hotel, Fredo lets him in. And Fredo has like a big party going on. There's like a band. There's girls. Drinks. And Fredo's like a big shot over there. And Michael walks in and he's basically like, all right, shut this whole thing down. I want to talk to Mo Green. <laughs> it's fucking great. Fredo is such a bozo. I love that dynamic between Michael and Fredo. 
It's the best. Oh, and the Godfather 2 when Michael finds out that Kate had an abortion. Whoa! Whoa, that's acting, baby. That's acting. Oh, oh, when Sonny Corleone from the first one, he, when he finds out that his sister's getting, uh, got beat up, he sees a face, she turns around, she's got the black eye, and he's like this. <sighs> it's like biting his finger, you're like, you know, this guy's gonna get it. All right, here we go. It's Planet of the Apes, come on. It's Charlton Heston. I can sit there and rewind the scene where he... <laughs> You can't talk. The, it's so frustrating that these goddamn apes got Charleston Heston, uh, Charleston Heston. He's like, you know, a scientist, an astronaut. A fucking, he just flew there in a rocket ship. And these goddamn apes are treat literally goddamn apes, are treating him like some type of animal. And he can't speak. And you just want him to speak so bad. And he makes the paper, remember he makes the paper airplane? Mm hmm and the two, like, logical apes, rational apes, they see the paper airplane, they're like, oh my god, this thing flies through the air. So they bring it to the elder, but the elder's so dogmatic, and so, like, into thinking that they, these humans are nothing but savages. They say, look at this, he made this, uh, I forgot what they call it, a flying device or something like that. And they show him the thing flies through the air, and the old, the old ape just takes it and he crumples it up and he goes... Nonsense. And he throws it to the side. It's like nonsense. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> nonsense. It would be like me coming up to you. And like, I make a, a coffee cup hover over to your hands. And you just take the coffee cup and throw it down. It's like, ah, nonsense. <laughs> nonsense. But when it, they... Get him, he tries to escape, and they put him up, oh, when they're spraying him with the fire hose, and he's like, and he fl just flips out, and he's like, it's a madhouse, a madhouse, there's no better scene than that, but before he, before he can even talk, they throw him, he tries to escape, they, they got him, uh, roped up in this net or whatnot, and they're all surrounding him, and they, one, one of the apes grabs him. And he can finally speak, right? And what does he say? <laughs> Get your filthy paws off of me, you damn dirty ape! And I can just picture that movie in the theaters at the time, people like erupting from their chairs. Because I practically jumped out of my chair the first time I saw it. It was like, yes! Finally! <laughs> and they're all like... <gasps> Fucking Planet of the Apes, man. There we go. Rocky. There's certain movies that when you talk to movie people and you tell them you haven't seen a movie, they gasp. And I, I never saw Rocky. Alright? I saw Rocky 2. I saw Rocky 3. I saw Rocky 4. I never saw the original Rocky. I saw clips here and there. And everybody gives me hell about this one. Alright? So I'm going to fucking watch Rocky. All right. Remember how I said any time when a movie comes on and you got to watch it when it's on TV? I'm sorry. Predator. Come on. How fantastic is this movie? How fucking fantastic is this movie? This is just... Guys. The best scene is when they all get spooked in the jungle... And they start unloading their guns into, like, seemingly nothingness. And all you see is tree branches falling and, like, trees falling over. And they're all just, like... <laughs> and it all ends with Jesse the Body Ventura's fucking uh, mini Gatling gun spinning, spinning out of ammunition. <laughs> they're firing the grenades. It's like... It's like... Just, it's, 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 it's such a great scene. And how many great scenes were in this movie? Come on. Oh yeah, here we go. Pale Rider. 
You put Clint Eastwood in a movie and I'm watching it. Pale Ride is a weird movie, man. Uh, Clint Eastwood rolls into town as like some kind of priest. And he starts kicking everybody's ass. And he makes big enemies with this company who's like drilling for, they're drilling for like oil or coal or something like that. And oh my god. The great scene in this movie is when he beats the shit out of these guys with uh, like they're bothering somebody in the town and he walks up and he beats the shit out of them with a piece of like uh, what does he say? He beats him up with a, a like an axe handle. And then when he's done he's like, there's something to be said for about a good piece of ash. Or oh, hickory. Good piece of hickory. <laughs> fucking pale rider, man. So if it's brand new, it's still got the security tag on. Come on. What are you kidding me? Oh, boy, what a treasure. What a treasure. Rambo, first blood. Come on. The scene at the end where he breaks down with the colonel. Where he has a, a breakdown, or the general, whoever the fuck he was. He blows up the whole town. He fucking blows up the whole town. <laughs> and then he's having this breakdown in the police station. I mean, come on. It doesn't get any better for people. It doesn't really get any better, does it? <laughs> Guys, we're 37 minutes in here. I don't know what to do. Okay, we gotta get moving. Sip of coffee for John Rambo. All right. We got a package here from our old friend. John Stover. Stover. I'm sorry, John Stover. Okay? Some of you out there might know John. You might know John for his incredible reproduction. What do we got here? Hold on a second. Yo, Bithead, enclosed you will find a couple of surprises I was cleaning out. Ba 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 ba. Okay, but I figure that you can show it off. Okay, I don't want to say too much. Here we go. What is this? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my god! Are you, dude? This is vintage, baby. This is vintage right here. Holy cow, would you look at that? It's a medium, I don't care. I'm going out into the changing room because you don't really need to see my nipples. Yeah, baby, come on! <laughs> Woo! Look at that! Oh, wow! Oh, look at that! I'm never taking it off! <laughs> this is great! Is this how this shirt's supposed to be? It's a medium! But the sleeves are supposed to be like that? Wow! Oh boy, I hope I have a wedding to go to soon because I know what I'll be wearing. Wow, John, that's amazing, man. What is this? Oh, baby. Wow. Here we go. What is this? Oh, wow. He sent us a copy of Super Raiden.
for Raven. And you know something, guys? I'm glad he did. Look at that. Super Raiden. One of the coolest PC Engine covers you're ever going to see. Very subtle. Very, uh, very understated. But you guys know, maybe you know, that I'm not the biggest Raiden fan. But Raiden is growing on me. Ever since we talked about Raiden for the Atari Jaguar, uh, Raiden has grown on me. For some reason, I have an itch to play Raiden. And this is, you know what, this is the perfect lead up to this next package right here. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I know what's in this box. I'm afraid of this one right here. Uh, let me just see if there's a note in there first. And then, uh, and then we're going to talk about this one. Here's my boys. Guys, this one's coming in all the way from California. No note included. Alright, I'm gonna tell you something right now. This is from Matt, and he did a marathon run through every single video. And on every every single video he left a comment. Okay? And his comments were great. Matt's a really good writer. And uh, he would tell me stories about that would relate to each particular show, you know, his life growing up, arcades, gaming, everything, life in general. And I tell you what, I would always look forward to Matt's comments. Always do look forward to Matt's uh, comments. At work or whatnot, I'd be reading them on my break, at home. It's almost like you develop a relationship with somebody that you've never even seen before. And you learn so much about them. Anyway... Let me show you what it is, and I guess I can explain a little more. Guys, you're just not going to believe it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is... <laughs> For those of you not in the know... This is the granddaddy right here. This is the, this is the pinnacle. This is the absolute. If you're a PC Engine person, if you're a Turbo Graphics person, okay, this is it. This is where the bus stops. This is the console to have. <laughs> this thing is unbelievably clean. I can't believe this, Matt. Man, I. I Matt sends me some emails, right? He says to me, you know, if you were to have, uh, you know, uh, go for like a, a dual, uh, what, what, like, what PC engine system would you go for if you had the opportunity to get it now? So I'm um, so so right away I say to him, oh, it's the dual R or the dual RX. It's the, it's the one to have. And now I think he's saying this because he's asking me my opinion so he could buy one for himself. So I give him a whole list of reasons why the Dual RX is the one to have. You know, 
I have the duo. The, the, my, my duo uh, is the Japanese duo. It's on its last leg. I play a game. I gotta, I gotta hit the desk next to it when it while it's loading because it's like the lens gets stuck on the rails. I don't know. The lens is out of whack. I sent it out once. It cost me fifty dollars to fix. I sent it out again. It cost me eighty dollars to fix. And the people that were doing it for me were, were hooking me up. So God knows what it would cost the average person. So I try to convince everybody: if you're gonna go for a duo, uh, if you want to play your PC Engine games and your PC Engine CD games, you gotta have a Duo RX. Or a dual R, and it's the most expensive version. I, they're going for like what are they going for? Like four, four fifty. Let's face it. Okay, sure you could pay three hundred and get the Japanese duo, but it's a ticking time bomb. It's just a matter of time before this gear breaks, this lens is out of whack, the lens burns out. It's like there's so there's so, so many things that can go wrong with this fucking thing. The capacitors are leaking. You're going to wind up spending the money in the long run. Or you could just have this beautiful machine right here. And what a beautiful machine. This is, the, this is what came out... Uh, this was what was released last, as far as the PC Engine was concerned. They, they fixed all the problems. Capacitor problems, fixed. Uh, it's just a well-built machine. It's the reliable system to have. Okay? Oh my god, holding this thing, I don't want to put it down. <laughs> I feel like taking it out for breakfast. So he was asking me all these questions, and I was telling him, yeah, this is the one to have. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And he's like, uh, sure, can you give me my, your address again so I can send it to you? And I'm like, well, I'm like, what, what? I'm like, whoa, I didn't realize it was heading in this direction. And I said to him, I said, Matt, I said, I can't accept it. I flat out can't accept it. This is not, this is, this is, I can't accept it. That's the bottom line. And I was being serious with him. I can't take this thing. And he said to me, he said, he wrote back, he said, you know something? He goes, I spend such and such a month for cable vision. He goes, I spend uh, Netflix, between Netflix and this and that, he was telling me how much a month he spends on like, entertainment on TV and he goes you know something I get your show for free and it gives me more entertainment than all of that stuff put together and I said wow it's one of the wildest compliments I ever got so I was like 316 Kensington Avenue Copac New York no uh, so he was really psyched to send it to the show, and I don't know. I don't know, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? So here we are. <whistles> Matt, and Matt did, listen, and Matt even said to me, he goes, listen, I don't want any recognition for this. I, you know, I don't, you don't have to put my name out there. Or, I, I don't care though, I don't care. I want them to be recognized for this because this is this is truly incredible. I mean, this really opens up some doors here. You know, it's what it when you got thousands of dollars worth of PC Engine games and you got a machine that's on its last leg. It's depressing. I w eventually I was going to get one of these, but man, it's just not in the cards for me right now. It's just not. If I was to toss four hundred and something dollars, I don't even know how I'd try to hide that from my wife. I tried to hide the, the PS4 from my wife. She found out about it, and it was like, uh, it was like World War Three. So I was like, there's no way I was going to be able to pull this off. So how nice to have a reliable, and I mean super reliable, I mean gorgeous. I mean this is the centerpiece. This this is something that you that you you hang on you you know you hang up in the living room next to pictures of your family. What a machine. What a machine. This thing is like... It's like they, they hit it with a buffing wheel. Oh my god. I don't want to put it on this workbench.
guys, and it's not even the, it's not even the dual R. It's the dual RX. Okay, for those that don't know, the dual R RX comes with the six button friggin' controller. The six button controller. Here we go. Look at this. Oh my Christ! Not to mention the the, the, the not to mention he said that this thing is modded six ways to Sunday. I think it's got like an RGB uh, mod in there. Or something like that. I don't know. He sent me all these pictures and whatnot. I mean, it's, this is like, this is like, it's incredible. Guys, the six button controller. All right, you ready for this? This is one thing that a lot of turbo PC engine guys, they make a mistake. They want to cheap out. They buy the original. Uh, PC engine. Okay, it's got an RF cable. It's a pain in the ass. It has the two-button controller. You can't enjoy some of the greatest games, like uh, Street Fighter 2. The six-button controller is a must-have for Street Fighter 2 alone. Okay, it's the greatest version of of Street Fighter 2 uh, on home console that you could possibly get. Oh yeah, you heard it here. Oh, it's the fastest. It's the smoothest, and it's got the best gameplay graphically. The Super Nintendo might have it. Maybe the Genesis, you know. Uh, the PC Engine version had to take out some scrolling. I get it. But, I mean, for, for what that machine is... Oh, my God. Look at this beautiful, beautiful... Adapter. And the AV cable, I have the AV cable, so that's that's no big deal. Wow. Wow. Matt. Matt, that's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. I really don't. But this means that Let's Plays in the future can be done in a reliable fashion. I don't got to monkey around. I had to monkey around with my AV thing because the sound would go in and out on the AV thing. I mean, this kind of tremendous, this is tremendous generosity, Matt. So, man, I, I don't know what to say. So let's look at this thing again. Oof. Oh, my God, look at this. Come on. You put your cards in there. You put your C's in there. Look at this thing. This is right off the showroom floor. I'll tell you what. You just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a fork! Thanks, Matt. Thank you. See you next time.